I stand for what's right as a Sikh. There was a genocide that took place on Sikhs in 1984 and we call it Never Forget 84. Hundreds of thousands of innocent Sikhs have died in that uh, genocide. It took place in June 1984 at the most holiest shrine that we've got. Common person would know it as the Golden Temple in Amritsar in Punjab. His name's Jag Tarsim Johar. We call him Juggi. So Juggi set up a website. They documented, they sat with the families. They showed pictures to those families that they'd never seen of their kids before. He was um, picked up. While he was picked up, he was tortured. Of Sikhs across the globe, we've done a massive campaign called the Free Juggy Now campaign, which is led by his brother, who's a lawyer, and he's a councillor for Labour. What's going on, guys, and welcome back to The Blue Tick Show, the world's fastest growing show. I'm your host, Mikey Mellin, and opposite me today, I've got Deepa Singh, Sikh activist. Welcome to the show, my brother. How are you? I'm not bad. How are you, brother? I'm well. Listen, we finally got it locked in. That's it. Finally got the story coming to light. So, firstly, before we jump into what you really do now, let's take it back to your childhood like I like to always do. Who are you? Where are you from? So, um, my name is Deepa Singh. I'm born and raised just around the corner from here, Hertfordshire. So, uh, as a um, young Sikh... Grew up, learnt a lot uh, religiously, culturally, and going to school, did what you do normally, as most people would. And then um, as uh, I grew up, got into the bad crowd, started uh, getting into um, in and out of jail I've been. So I've done a, a few sentences for Class A drugs. You know, we were in there for from the age of 16, 17, all the way to, say, 32, we were in and involved in crime and criminality. So um, I sort of turned my life around about 10 years ago. But yeah, in that life, um, you see a lot, like most people would go as a Sikh, most people being brought up, they would go to university and study. And obviously my university was on the street, so I learned a lot. And it made me a bit wiser to um, the world now. But yeah, that, that was my sort of upbringing. Look, as much as you want to tell us that's your upbringing, we like to dive a little bit deeper into <laughs> it. What was your childhood like? What, what school like for you? What's going on guys? This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. If you're like me and you're really, really busy and you have not got a chance to cook food, HelloFresh is the place. This is Blue Tick 24. Today, we're gonna make it quick and simple. I'm gonna make a quick HelloFresh meal. The first part is we've literally got to quickly dice up the shallot, drizzle of oil, add the shallot, add the chicken. So they've told me to dice up these green beans. I like to always get the ends off. I've got the garlic. They want me to crush two bits of this garlic. So I'll pop the garlic off into the garlic press, put the rice in, and I'm time to put a timer on for 13 minutes. So guys, while all that is literally just quickly cooking behind me, I'm gonna quickly tidy up the mess I made. I got my rice in the back cooking, and I got my chicken in the back cooking. Then we're gonna do a taste test at the end. Make sure you use code BLUETICK24. It's time for the taste test. Can't complain for a 20 minute meal. For a great offer, use code BLUETICK24. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section saying I use code BLUETICK. Thanks guys, see you on the next one. School was all right. I used to like playing football, um, Arsenal fan. Uh, I used to love, um, we used to play football on Saturdays and Sundays. Quite good, um, won a lot of trophies. We used to compete a lot up and down the country, not just in um, the standard Sunday leagues and Saturday leagues. We used to play in like the Sikh leagues and the Sikh tournaments across the country as well. Were you ever in trouble as a kid? Uh, a few times, not too many. Nothing out of the ordinary? No, nah, nothing out of the ordinary. I think um, the first time I would say uh, the police were sort of involved when I was about 12. Uh, they came around, a few of us got into trouble. They were saying somebody used a knife, they didn't know who it was, a few of us, but uh, we got off with cautions. But that's the first time sort of police um, were sort of involved in my life i was taken to the police station interviewed what was it like as a 12 year old going to the police station um i was more worried about my family rather than the police to be fair i ain't gonna lie and um you know like your mum and dad they were my mum and dad won my case hard from there so yeah do you cut any older brothers older yeah, sisters yeah i've got three older sisters and an older brother as well any of them well your brother ever involved in no nah, none of them none of them nothing no, like that no, no. so you was the black sheep of the family basically yeah, yeah. so look, as you got older things got a little bit more Naughty for you, I guess. Yeah, yeah, He was out there a little bit more, a bit on the streets a lot more. Yeah. Why'd you go to the streets? You know what it is? We were hustling, trying to earn a living in it. That's all it was, trying to earn ends meet, get by. It wasn't like things, as for some people, families, for you would say Asian families and life's easy from at home. Sometimes it's not for everyone. So, you know, we've uh, we had an upbringing, we see struggles and, you know, like, 
that's reason I went in there. It was for hustling. It was to earn money. Yeah. Was you making money? Yeah, we were making money. We live in. You live a life as well. You live lavish life. Some days you're up. Some days you're down. That's how it was in that life. Just drug dealing. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Bits and bobs on the side, nothing too much, but yeah, main main bread and butter was uh, class age, yeah. What age did you start all of that? Early 20s. Early 20s. So you weren't too young. Yeah. You weren't too young. Yeah. What age you stop? 32. That's old age. Yeah, yeah. On my last sentence, I went away a few times for it as well, um, but my last sentence was um, that, and it was a reflection period in my last sentence as well, so that's right. So how did you actually get caught by the police? So... The, um, you know, like in the um, the the CID and the officers, they do obos in it, yeah. So they're doing an obo, and they've sent in undercover officers dressed as cats, basically. So they've scored off a couple of runners first, yeah. Then they've scored off, and then I've questioned it, and then somebody vouched for them, and then from there, the guy who vouched for them knew one of our lot for a long time, and then from that. They scored a few times, not just from me, of some of the runners. And was then, he involved? Was he a snitch? Uh, yeah, of course he was. Oh, he was, yeah. Yeah, he snitched. He brought um, he brought not just to our team. He brought that them same cats to two other firms. So three firms got nicked in this obo around Hertfordshire in two thousand and four. Uh, they did an obo for six months, and they were scoring. They looked like they looked like they're addicts. They were dressed the same. They acted the same. You know, and um, some people were saying they even had blockers in that they were using in front of them. So that's how the guy accounted for me because he's seen them use. So that's mad. Yeah. You know when you actually steep how crazy the police go. Yeah, they go. You you can't not get caught yeah. if they're sitting there bringing them around you like that. You're thinking, yeah, sweet, it's just a shot. Yeah, and it, it's like entrapment, but entrapment don't work in this country. But it was a full entrapment. Yeah, it was it literally was straight up. What was prison like? Um, prison's all right. I've done a few months in young offenders for a breach of an order, so I sort of had a, a feel of it anyway. But um, yeah, it was calm because there was about 20 of us who got arrested. Was you all in the same prison? All went to the like, same prison, cool. all in the same court in the same morning. Like it was madness. So you were all literally chilling? Yeah, yeah. We, it was all right. Even on remand, we were on remand for about six months before we got sentenced, and it was like a little party in Bedford Jail. <laughs> well, listen, when you got 20 boys there, not, nothing can really stop you. You're the only little army in there, really. But listen, as much as you're saying prison is good, there must be some hard days as well. Yeah, of course. You, everyone only, only remembers the good days. You don't remember the low days, innit? Yeah. You don't remember when your letters ain't coming, your phone calls ain't got an answer, the money ain't coming. So people don't reali realise that. They, it's easy to forget those days, isn't it? Yeah, when you're alone on that cell. Yeah, you know I mean, it's... Um, is there corruption in prison? Of course there is. Of course what, there is. Especially is now, private prisons, there's more drugs in there than there was out. And that's what, like, do you think any anyone who went in, even ourselves, do you think anything changed from road to inside? It doesn't. You're still, you're around other criminals. Your mindset's the same. Everything remains the same. Yeah, of course it does. It's everything. mad though when you think about it. You're meant to be in a place where you're meant to be punished for it. Yeah. And you got everything that you had outside. Everything, so yeah, everything was coming in. In them days, you, like, the windows weren't that hard. It wasn't as... Um, Locked off, as it is now. Now, back then they were bringing in it all? Everything. Parties, alcohol, meat, KFCs, all sorts. No, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In them days, yeah, yeah, definitely. Fair enough. Did you see a difference from when you first went prison to when you went now? Well, not now, but when you last went? Yeah, uh, you see, because they're getting private, things were getting easier. Really? Yeah. They were getting easier? Yeah. I'd say that. The private, before there was a lot of ex-army running the prisons, it was all HMP. Um, now, because there's private, a lot of people are, are on private wages, aren't they? So they, they there's a lot. You, you see it yourself and you, you, you're not a stupid guy. You can see out there how many officers are getting done for supplying inside and bringing in phones and all, and all the drugs and stuff. So it's just... Listen, it's a mad, it's a mad, mad, mad life yeah. we live out there. And your last time going to prison, you was a lot older. You're 32 years old. Yeah, yeah. How'd you get caught then? Um, I slipped up a bit. I started using a bit. So I was sniffing. I started sniffing. So we were selling brown and crack. And then on the social, I was selling coke as well. So I started using a bit. You get sloppy and you get caught. And that's what happened. I got caught with a bit. I was on bail. 
and then they sent an undercover officer again to the pub I used to go to. But I clocked him a mile off, so I gave him paracetamol four times. But I still got done. I knew Swear that you gave yeah, him paracetamol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I knew I was on Obo anyway, and I knew I'd been caught for uh, a, a few ounces anyway. So um, from there, because I, I, I was on bail, I'll just give it to him anyway. I thought, yeah, I mean, I'm going to jail anyway, so who cares? Isn't it? And what did they say to you in court when they found out you gave Giz paracetamol? No, they, they laughed. The judge laughed when he sentenced me, but um, because I was using. I got a bit of a lenient sentence, so it wasn't that bad, innit? Fair enough. Yeah. Prison then, at that age? Yeah, it changed uh, a lot. I, w I did a diploma in there, started to reflect on life a lot, changed a lot of habits. And uh, yeah, that was a big reflection point in my last sentence. It wasn't, I did, you know, the first, the, the, the second sentence I went when all of us got done in the, sec in the big obo. This, I was on my own, but you already know people anyway. So it was fine. But you're on your own, in it. You're not with your friends or family who are in there, in it. Do you reckon yeah. prison helped you? It made me wiser. I say that it made me a lot wiser. Helped me. Uh, it probably made me who I am today a bit. It built. It builds you, don't it? That's what it's. It's like um, studying, in it. Some people study. They go to school, college, uni, uh, and that's what builds them, in it, for their future. That sort of made me who I am today. I think. And you said to me previously, when you was in prison the last time, you started reflecting on life, change your life yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What was the big turning point for you? S uh, stopping bad habits, trying to focus more on my religion. Um, I was praying more. And that sort of helped a lot, man. When you come out, did you ever slip up and go back? Of course. I went straight back into it. because Yeah, because, you know, when you're surrounded by that lifestyle, that's all you know, it's hard to get out, man. It's hard to get out. So sometimes you have to cut off the place that you're around and the people that you're around. And we call it in Sikhi now, which I've learned, is Sangat. It's the people around you. You can have positive Sangat or negative Sangat, isn't it? So. And what helped you really say enough is enough, I need to stop this? It was just enough, man. Like I was just going back down to where I was and I've had enough. I just uh, like turned my phone off, cut, it, cut ties with everyone and just moved out of the town. That's it, that's it, that's it that's man. It. I moved, man. I had enough. That's good though. Listen, it's good you had that power in you because most people keep going back to it no yeah. matter what. They're backing it, backing it, backing it. Yeah. Because they're surrounded by it. You, you you need willpower, one. You need strength. And a lot of strength comes from religion. And I'll say that to people out there. If you don't have faith or you don't have God, then you're not going to get very far in life, man. It's really important to have a bit of faith. No matter what the religion as well. I try. I tell everyone as well. People are like, oh, you're Muslim or this or that. Da, 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 da. And I say, look, my thing is, I don't care what religion you are. But just believe in God. That's, That's it. it. Man. I don't. I'm I've, not here. I'm not going to sit here and say, "Ah, oh, this religion." That I'm not one of them people. Yeah. But yeah, have faith in whatever you want to believe in. Believe in something, and you're good. Yeah. You're at least halfway there. And just values and morals. Yeah, makes a yeah, massive difference. You know, difference. in that life, you lose them. And that's what it you is. You've got no values and morals. Yeah, Everyone's fucking each other. Yeah, Everyone's trying yeah, to rob yeah. that person. Do this. It's just cats and dogs everywhere, man. It's horrible, man. And then you turn onto a part of your life where. Things went a little bit different. Definitely, yeah. And you, you said a quote earlier on, there was more heat on me doing what I do now than when I was selling drugs. Definitely. That's a big statement. So for the viewers watching, thinking, what's he doing now? Well, what is it you do now? What do you stand for? I stand for what's right. And, you know, as a Sikh, there was a genocide that took place on Sikhs in 1984. And we call it Never Forget 84. Uh, we're not going to forget it. And the reason we're not, because hundreds of thousands of innocent Sikhs had died in that uh, genocide and uh, it took place in June 1984 at the most holiest shrine that we've got, Sidi Harmandar Sahib. You'd know it and the common person would know it as the Golden Temple in Amritsar in Punjab. And when they're sending tanks and armies in there and innocent babies are dying, nine months old or three weeks old and women and kids are dying, nah man, we're not going to forget that and not until they, they don't even declare it a genocide. So have you done some digging into it? It's yeah, out man. It actually, is a genocide. Yeah, definitely. So we've sat with families, supported families. There's a welfare for them. Um, and anyone who documents it, I just want to put it out there. Anyone who do, does document this, you get heat. You get pressured. And the reason for that is in 2014, yeah, there was documents leaked that the British government were part of that collusion. They supplied. So Margaret Thatcher was with that Prime Minister at that time of India, Indira Gandhi. She sat and she supplied. And the documents were leaked in 2014. That's 30 years later that some journalists has um, 
uh, put him out and it was it exploded in the media in the telegraph in the guardian and all the national papers that the sas sub, uh, sub supported india to attack the sikhs so sikhs here living here for many years we knew but it was it was clarified and what kind of heat have you had on you so speaking about that um there there's one of our guys he was documenting this um, he used to support families there. He got the the families that suffered. He married their daughters off there and things like that. So his name's Jagtar Singh Johar. We call him Juggy. So Juggy set up a website, and there's a couple other guys who have set up the websites as well. And they documented. They sat with the families. They showed pictures to those families that they never seen of their kids before. Wow. Yeah. Man. So he did a lot of groundwork and grassroots work, and he knew which police officers had done what. To which families had raped, say, certain officers had raped this family's mum or this women in them houses. So he knew everything about the corrupt Indian and Punjab police. So when you document those things, you're going to get pressure. So he documented that. And then for some, and obviously these guys are around us, so we were doing tournaments in memory of some of those who sacrificed themselves. And yeah. we've done camps under their names and whatnot. So me, myself, we've been doing a lot. Not just me, there's a lot of people. I don't, just because I'm speaking, yeah. it don't mean it's just me. There's loads of guys out there doing great work on this. And collectively, we've done a lot. And he's one who did a lot, stepped really stepped it up. And what's happened... He went to get married in 2017. On the 4th of November, two weeks after his wedding, they threw a bag over his head, threw him in the back of his hand while he's shopping with his newlywed wife. So he's gone back home to get married. Wow, wow, wow. And they threw him in the back of a van. Normal guys, plain clothes, not officers. So he didn't know they were officers. Plain clothes, threw a bag, threw him in the back of the van. So his family think he's been kidnapped for money or his passport or whatnot. And there's madness for the next couple of days. And then all of a sudden, the chief minister of Punjab just put an announcement, announcement out. We've caught the people who were doing all these murders. And they've pinned 10 murders on him. They've classed him as a murderer. Yeah. One murderer, they've said he's um, or, uh, affiliated to banned organisations. They've done so much. So from here and the globe, of Sikhs across the globe, we've done a massive campaign called the Free Juggy Now campaign, which is led by his brother, who's a lawyer, and he's a councillor for Labour. So his brother leading the campaign, and he's a brilliant guy, um, Gurt Preet Singh Johar. He's recently just done a tour in Canada. So um, anyone watching, just make sure you follow the Free Juggy Now campaign. It's massive. And they've not... Uh, what? How, how has that benefited him? Um, has there been any movement he, while, in it? While the first three days of him being kid, um, picked up and uh, we call it a brutally detained didn't it yeah so he was um, picked up while he was picked up he was tortured they really? yeah so he, his solicitors called it out and said the first day they he's written a letter so it's out in the public domain he wrote a letter and his solicitors leaked it and put it out so he was um, he's a British citizen born and bred here he's gone there on his passport to get married and imagine that honeymoon for you you know what I mean? You're out. So that that's how he got picked up for 10 days. Um, the first 10 days before they took him into a police station, they tortured him, electric shocks, his nipples, earlobes and his testicles. And they asked him countless um, questions, interrogated him differently and made him so sign false blank confessions. So whilst under torture, you're going to do whatever you're going to do. You want. But he was shown pictures of other activists activists from the UK, from Canada and stuff as well. Pictures like me, myself, yeah, yeah, fully. And they haven't openly denied it, but they haven't let um, a private investigation go on on the, te uh, on the torture to this day. The UN have called and said he's arbitrarily detained, he needs to be released. And what have they said? No. No, they haven't even resolved. And this government have just given mere lip service for the last five, six years. So six and a half years, six, six years this November it was. And That's when we were re uh, speaking and talking about it. That's when, um, about the podcast. Yeah, come yeah. on. So that's, um, that was six years. It's been. Wow. And no, and no government has stepped up and said, enough, release nah, him. No one. No one. So they, Nazardine Ratcliffe, um, she was released. She supported the campaign. She's come to the protests. And she was in uh, uh, Iran for a few years, weren't she? Um, so... Her, her and her family, her, Richard Radcliffe, he was supporting the campaign. You know, there's so many political prisoners from UK that have been picked up abroad, but knowing you're doing trade with India and you're sitting on the table and he's the topic of discussion and you're not bringing him home, come on. 
Yeah, that's that's mad. That's that's serious. And at the end of the day, there's so much more that happens out there that we don't know about. Yeah, of course. Like what you've brought to light now, I I'm not aware of. Yeah. I'm guessing all the Sikhs are aware of it, of course, but I'm not aware of it because it's not being publicly announced as in from outside the Sikh community because people probably don't want to get involved. The average person don't want to, don't know. Definitely. Scared of the heat as well, thinking, definitely. especially when you're on here saying X, Y, and Z. Yeah, yeah. Other podcasts might say, no, fuck that. I don't want to yeah. get involved. It's true though. Yeah, Listen, that's the world we live in. People 100%. get scared of the police. They think, no, nah, I don't want to be involved. Therefore. Uh, and from that though, because of uh, people raising their voices in the community of the campaign, uh, within to shut the campaign down, they've raided five of our houses here. Illegal raids on our houses. They took everything. Didn't arrest. Didn't arrest none of us at the time. They didn't arrest you. Lot. None of us got arrested. No. We chance. were we were free to leave the house. They just confiscated everything in the house. Probably bugged the houses. They, definitely, they took the phones, took all the money, took people's passports. They took kids like gadgets, um, iPads, and things like that from people's homes. One sec. So they fight raided five of your lot's houses. Yeah, here. And didn't arrest no one. No one got arrested at that time, bruv. So wow. these are illegal raids. Yeah, 100% it's illegal. Yeah, you can't... These are fishing exercises. So and this government, under their terrorism law, they breach their powers. They can do what they want. <laughs> they tortured him, electric shocks, his nipples, earlobes and his testicles. Yeah, man, of course, it's a big headache. Last five, six years campaigning what, for our brother. What makes you stick at it? Prayers, strength. You can't you give up. You could have given up. You yeah, could have. of course. Anyone can turn their back. But it's not just him. He was documenting something that's happened in 84. And if we let them them families down who suffered the genocide, then we're not Sikhs. So how can you call yourself Sikh? Isn't it? And that's one of the th first things I learned coming into it about 10 years ago, that to have values and morals, but to speak the truth, come on, man. Like if you look recently, uh, everyone the world's speaking about Palestine, yeah. On the average guy, not I'm not talking about governments. I'm talking about the average guy knows the occupied land. Is there? There's nothing different to us. But we've been speaking about it for 40 years. And this year is 40 years, and they still don't class it as a genocide. We still ain't as justice. So what are they classing it as? They say there was a few terrorists in the in the. Harmandar uh, Sahib in the Golden Temple Complex as they would call it we don't call it that we call it Harmandar Sahib and they went in there to get them out but then why were they planning uh, we've got answers for it why were 60 other Godwari attacked on the same day when they knew where he was uh, go back a few months uh, uh, a year uh, if you had an arrest warrant but he handed himself in already and he was arrested and he got bailed so what are you guys on about? You didn't come in for that. You know what you were doing. Wow, wow. You know, it's, it is mad though. When you sit here and you listen to someone telling a story that is backed up by facts, it's mad because there's so much more that goes on out there that we don't know about. Of course, definitely. You're from the Sikh community. There's other communities where it's going on, even within the Sikh community. I'm sure there's plenty of other situations that are going on as definitely. well. And we don't know about it. But the news only show what they want to show. They only portray a certain way they want to portray. Even, even down to Palestine, they've done what they're doing in Palestine. Is you're saying they've done the same thing there. It's it's not the only two countries they're doing it to. There's plenty of places of where they're doing what they want. Even down to little things like incidents that happen on the street, massive incidents where 300 policemen turn up. They don't show on the news. Exactly. They don't put that on the news. They only show what they want to do. They want to make. Even now, they're making Muslims look bad. They're yeah, making man. we're all fucking terrorists apparently. And with the Sikh community, it's 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 disgusting what the UK, America, the main strength countries are doing. Therefore, so um, if you see from all that, there's a lot of heat that's happened. But see these uh, global countries, everyone stays silent on it. But only recently, Canada and America have spoken out because people were murdered on their soil. So they're backing you. Yeah, yeah, they, well, they they're are, speaking yeah? up, and obviously they've got their own conflict of interest with India. Of course, that's the powers to be. But if we get used at the same time, that's what's happening. But either way, they're still speaking exactly what we've been speaking about for 40 years. And they're openly saying what openly, you are saying the, is the Prime Minister of Canada, um, there, there's a, a Sikh activist who ran the Gurdwara in Canada. He was shot and murdered on the Gurdwara car park premises. Uh, Hardeep Singh Nijar. We call him Shaheed Hardeep Singh Nijar. This year, in June, last year. In Canada? So, yeah, in Canada. Shot June, in shot in broad daylight in the Gurdwara car park. Wow. Yeah, and then the, the Canada Canadian government, the Prime Minister in Parliament, has openly said, "Agents of India have done this." Openly no called out India, Justin Trudeau. Yeah, 
it's mad and then how how's no how there should be so much more people talking about this then of course definitely and at the same time a few days prior to him being murdered one of our lads here of star sinkunda he was poisoned and people will say you lot are living in fantasy but he was a healthy lad he was doing protests. He was doing all. Have sorts. they proven it's poison? But Westminster, West Midlands Police blocked every avenue of a postmortem. They blocked every. They blocked his mum coming to the UK to uh, see her son off. How do you mean they blocked her? They didn't let her have a visa for the day. Stopped everything. So she's lost her husband in India to. Uh, being shot and killed by the Indian police and then her own son being poisoned so it's here the same on... person the same family yeah they killed the dad and the son no no the connect- guys have you been thinking of move to Dubai I've partnered up with Cranbrook Legal to make your experience so much easier literally I got the main man from Cranbrook Legal right now to tell you how easy it is guys it's as simple as picking up the phone giving us a call and letting us get on with the business what literally one phone call literally one phone call a few documents and we're there and then I just get up, fly to Dubai, and I ain't got to pay tax no more. Yeah, but you can come and see us. We'll take you out for a meal, show you Dubai, and then it's all up to you after that. Bro, where do I sign now? Stadium one was someone separate, but okay, but okay. but in in the genocide and in the struggle, yeah, 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 in yeah. the Sikh struggle, her she lost her husband and now she's lost her son to the struggle, and he's from he was living here in the UK. Didn't let her come at all. Didn't let her come at all. They put a block. So uh, there was an MP recently last week. He called it out. He goes, um, why isn't there being an investigation into this? Why have West Midlands police covered this up? So an MP said it in Parliament as well recently. So so what happens when these MPs are saying these things? How is the government not having to address exactly. it? Exactly. I, I have no... I can't answer that, can I? But all I say is the reason... Is overall the reason is Sikh activists are being targeted. So if the Canadian government can say that agents of India have targeted him, why is it that Rishi Sunak covered an agent from India who was working here and he was um, expelled and sent back to India? So why do you think at the same time of that poisoning? So why do you think you're being targeted? Because we speak up about the genocide. Anyone who speaks up is going to be shut down. Anyone who has weight, who can pull a um, push a strong narrative within their community is going to be anyone who's speaking up is going to be shut down definitely you cannot be bigger than them your voice can't be bigger than them and you've experienced a lot more heat definitely since but i'm from road anyone from road you know the heat you get you're on you're you're sharp your eyes are and ears are everywhere you see which cars are there what's out of place you know what's going on this heat's completely different that bad that bad do you reckon your house is bugged definitely Phones? Yeah, 100%. Do you ever talk on your phone? Don't need to. We're not talking about nothing bad, innit? Even now, like, we're having a convo. Yeah, of course. It, yeah. it's, it, it, if you're up to no good, then yeah. But nobody's up to no good. We're just highlighting the genocide. And you were talking to me about when you come back from a holiday. Oh, recently, yes. Yeah. So I come back. Um, I went away for a few days to get a break. Winter break. You come back. I come back on 25th of December, Christmas Day here. Uh, a lot of people will celebrate Christmas. I came back on Christmas Day and the the plane stopped and they said um, for about 25 minutes they didn't let nobody off the plane. So we've got technical difficulties. Um, as soon as the plane doors open after about 25 minutes, I look and there's 10 officers there. I see them in the high vices. They're waiting and they're going, come with us. Uh, you're stopped under the Schedule 7 Act, which is a terrorism act. So under Schedule 7, it's a law which you have to comply you don't have the right to remain silent. It says it on the paperwork. You have to speak, otherwise you can be convicted on charge and terrorism. And by you have to speak, so if you do sit there and say no comment, what happens? You can go get convicted and charged under terrorism laws. Under terrorism? Under terrorism. It's a terrorism law. It was brought in in 2000, so just after 9-11. So a lot of Sikhs and Muslims have been stopped under that law over the last 20 years. Simply because you're travelling? Travelling. And because of our activism. So they asked specifically about Jagtar Singh Do- Johar. They asked you about these? Asked, Jag- asked about that. And what did they ask? They asked um, if we bought it, if he was, if the governments did a, a deal today and he was brought home tomorrow, would you stop campaigning? They were asking. They asked that? They asked that question. And what did you answer? I said, then I'll carry on talking about 1984 because you haven't declared that's a genocide. But they genuinely said to you, if we bring yeah. him home, will you stop? Yeah. They said that they asked that question. Wow, it's yeah. a big question to ask. Definitely, and it shows because that's admittance. That's yeah, saying they're showing their intent. Definitely, 
They're showing their Do you reckon they'll release him? They won't release him um, until these lot have done a trade deal, and which they're doing. So uh, UK badly, since Brexit, Modi's come here in 2015, he gave a dossier. The first thing he did when he came back to the UK, because he was banned, he was banned from travelling to the UK, I'm sure he was, and um, or he wasn't welcomed, that's what I'd say. In 2015, when he came, his first visit as Prime Minister, he gave a dossier, and in there he, he mentioned loads of Sikh activists. Well, the guy who got poisoned... Yeah, his name was in that dossier. Yeah, now you tell me. So when you're saying a trade deal, what do you mean by a trade deal? So Brexit, in UK is finished. Since they left the EU, they need money. Get it. So they need to trade. Yeah, it's gone to pots in it, mate. They ain't got nothing here. So they need to be, um, uh, they have to align with India. They're getting trade there. They're getting income from India. So are they currently not working with India? They're in, in little ways, but they want to, they've got a roadmap for the next 10 years, which they want to do. Um, but they keep saying, India keeps saying, but well, you need to stamp down on Sikhs and Khalistanis and activists. That's what they keep saying. So they keep pushing that as part of the trade. So they're on about national security and stuff like that. So, you, so you're basically saying, when the UK says, look, listen, you bring back Juggy, yeah. release him, we'll shut up the, the activists. I don't think they're... But that's, what the, that's the kind of... That's they're, the they're, kind they're, they're obviously, they're going to have to negotiate, yeah. But he, like, he's, he's part of the political conversation, therefore. And the thing is, once he comes out, the volume just goes up, no? Yeah, of course. Wow. So they say they're in but a he's a British citizen tortured. And if they've got blood on their hands, but if if we didn't speak up, he would have been dead. Has anyone had contact with him? Uh, I think his family did initially, but it's very rare that they speak. Lawyer does, and the lawyer uh, speaks back to the community. So his lawyer, his brothers, he, him, you know how much of a good guy that guy is, yeah? He's seen other political prisoners there struggling so he's got his brother to set up a le legal assistance board so they're supporting prisoners out there but. so there's other prisoners in where he is yeah man so is he in a mainstream prison out there yeah yeah T the hard jail Delhi one of the main prisons and he's top actually, security and he's actually in there for nothing yeah literally nothing. with no evidence nothing they haven't been proven okay if he's guilty, did he have a trial this is what I'm saying if he's guilty where's your trial he ain't even had a trial so he had nothing. They literally six nicked years, him, bro. prison, done. Yeah. Six years, no trial. But you have to have a trial. No trial. That judicial system, they just kick it into the long grass. He'll be there 10 years before he even sees a judge, probably. He's been in and out. Uh, uh, um, it's been bailed. Uh, another pending hearing. This, no witness turned turn up. This, that, but for ten years, six years they've been doing that. Kicked into the long grass. So how do you reckon it ends? How would you, as a Sikh, like this to stop? Well, we want some sort of justice for 1984 first. That's the priority. And, and what is justice to you? Justice is to those who... Some people who were there killing innocent people are still roaming the streets free. Still? Yeah. But the Prime Minister will call it... Like, obviously, at that time, there was an armed struggle straight after, and Sikhs went to war with India on the ground, and then that was up until 1995. So that was a mad armed struggle, like, you know, top end Prime Minister got murdered by Sikhs. Um, the Chief Minister, like, it was mental, yeah? But, like, since then, they've stamped down and they went in. But, but the armed struggle, this is your average guy whose wife was being raped, or anything, but they're going to stand up. Yeah, no, you have to. You yeah, have to. But look, man, tell me. I want to know from your point of view. How does? It, how would you like this to finish? There has to be some kind of justice, man. These people who are roaming. If you're picking up innocent Sikhs who are from the UK over there, you're setting a stronger message. This ain't ending. This is getting worse. There cannot be. I can't see no light here. Yeah, but what I want, don't want to be is those future generations to say you lot failed. We can't be failing our, our community, definitely. As long as you've got a voice and your voice is being heard, you're doing your part. Yeah. Realistically, that, nothing's going to change. Nothing's right going to change. But at least you know yourself, yeah. I've done my part. Yeah, yeah. So when we go, uh, we have to face God, don't we? We have to look and say, did you do your bit? And we tried. We tried. That's how I see it. Because they're really going harsh on you. And do you reckon they'll end up locking you up? Uh, they'll put look they're going to make fa they always do fabricated charges they to tarnish you they have to because write you, you like you said you're still on bail right yeah 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 I'm on bail uh, my, they, they say my trial's later this year but they keep saying that they've been doing that every year and that's here and what, what's your trial for uh, I've responded to an email I've responded to an email bro. that's wow. it wow what's yeah. your charge for yeah. I responded to an yeah. email
That's it. And I've been on bail there. Strict bail conditions. I want to leave to leave the house. They took my passport off me. They did so much first. So you st- now they've got slowly, back? Oh, you back. since since all these bail conditions and obviously campaigning, you were certain MPs have put pressure on to get your passport back or this that. Like you, but still now, man, they put a lot of pressure. Forget that. I'll give go to another story. Do you know how much pressure they put here? They tried to extradite. They've got they picked up one lad, Juggy. Yeah, they've got him there when he went on his wedding. They tried to extradite three lads. <laughs> From here, we call them the West Midlands Three. They tried to extradite him from here on a fabricated murder in 2009 and tried to extradite him. The day these lot did a, a deal uh, with India, Dominic Rab came back. The next day, Pretty Patel signed and stamped their extradition without even looking at the paperwork. And it went to court. They were on bail for nine months. And when it went to court, it got thrown out in six minutes. Wow. Yeah, and we were all outside the court, like Westminster security. They were like, we've never seen nothing like it. Coach loads of people from the community were there. So they really did, were trying their best. They're trying their best to please India. Just for a trade deal? Trade deals. Trade deals are prioritised over seek human rights, over anyone's human rights. All comes down to money. 100%. That's that's, that's what this world goes around on, money. And they have to cover up their hand in their part that they played in the genocide because these lot played a part. So when you deep dived into the genocide, because like you said, you did, Mm. what did you uncover? Uh, This government were part of it, that there's people roaming the streets free that that were part of it. Um, What else is there? There's there's so much. The families were neglected. The, The reason that they've done the genocide was to stamp out the Sikh community in India, they don't want minorities growing in India. They're, they're very right-wing fascists there. So there's a big agenda. And politically, they know Sikhs are strong. We're a very strong community. And are, Small, but strong. What is the Sikh uh, population at the minute? Uh, in the UK, not a lot. I would say about half a million. Growing? Yeah. So, it's, the, the, so it is only going to get louder. Yeah, yeah It's yeah. only going to get stronger. And we're a young religion, 554 years. So we're a young religion. It's only going to get stronger, only yeah. going to get louder. Yeah. The people are only going to make more noise. Of course. And I guess the police are just going to... It's You know, the, how can I explain? You know, the genocide, it's like... Th- th- there was a guy, um, Siri Akal Taks, like our highest political throne, yeah? His name's Gurdev Singh Gonke, Jatidar Gurdev Singh Gonke. So he was like equivalent, not equivalent, but I would say a similarity, like the Pope... For the Vatican. Yep. Imagine going in. This is what they did. They, they've gone in. Say this. They've gone in. Took the Pope. You know. Ex, uh, hit, murked him off. Killed him. And nobody knows where his body is. Yeah. In 1991 they did that. 32 For years real? ago. Yeah. Wipes and his out. body's never. So loads of people's bodies have never been found in Punjab. And he, like, families have never. Their sons have gone out. And they've never seen their sons walk back, back through their doors. And what reason are they given? What are they saying? Anyone who wears a turban beard and wears the five Ks, yeah, they want to wipe out our faith. But why? Why? Why have they picked you? Because they we they would say, look, Punjab was originally ours. They they occupy it, so they know that if we read our history, they know that's our land. So. When they're not giving us the same rights, all right, let's talk about a simple thing: language in India, yeah. They'll put English, Hindi and English, but Punjabi's out the window. Why? It's our land. Why aren't it being taught in schools? Yeah, education. They're coming at all angles. I can go on all day about it. All angles. When they're coming at you, all and they're taking your language away. They're taking your water away. Then five rivers. Pun- Punjab means five rivers, land of the five rivers. They've took a few away already. They've already diver- um, divided us, broken. They know what they're doing. They're taking everything from us. They want it to be a desert. That's where. That's the way it's going. Who's the face for the Sikhs at the moment? Where internationally, we always only look up to our highest power, which is Siddhi Akal Takh Sahib. So there's no face in it. We believe in a guru. Scripture. No, in the sense as who's the the leading face for so we anything that comes from Siddhi Akal Takh Sahib. That's the highest throne, and that's the political okay. throne. Yeah. So what's next for you? For me, well, we just carry on speaking. We have to do what we got to do. We have to do what we got. Even here, we're like, even when we got raided here, we've stuck it on the police. We've kicked them out of the Gordhari. We've kicked them out of uh, Sikh events, and they know that. So like, tell me, you, you said it's a little bit personal with you. Of course, that's why. It's because so I was stuck it us, on expe- them. Explain to us what happened. So when they've raid- illegally raided our houses here, there was a protest two weeks later, 
uh, the conservative um, ICC party, so the conservative government's in charge. We did a protest there, and on stage we announced that there's, uh, y- until we know who done these raids yeah. and why you've done these raids, you're banned from our Gurdwara. You cannot, you can come in as to pray yeah, yeah. as an average person, but you cannot come in as official officers. And so if we know they, about it, we'll kick you out. So what if they want to come in to arrest someone? Then they should speak to the committee and say that... Oh, can we come in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way you can come in and set up your stalls or do it. And we make it clear. We kicked them out three, four times. What do you mean by you kicked them out? They set up stalls and we have recruitment stalls to recruit our people to spy on us. That's what they're doing. They're, in a nutshell, you're recruiting people from our Gurdwara to spy on us. That's what you're doing. That's why you're setting up recruitment stalls. So we kicked them out. We shut their stalls. Who gave them permission to set up? Probably some crop committee members or whatnot. You know, you get them in every community. Yeah. That's minor. It's not, but you and know, you fully just pressured them, kicked them out. Fully kicked them out. The videos have gone viral. There's articles everywhere, and we internationally embarrassed them. That's why they made it personal with me. So they got a problem with you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. When did you last have any communication with the police? Um, only on that schedule seven uh, on Christmas Day. And they let you go. And regarding yeah, your phones, after three and a half hours, they kept me. They've still got my phone. Although they've said to me in an email, they'll send it back. Still got it. They said they examined it. But they asked me, so I'll just be frank. They said, um, when did you get this phone? I go, two weeks ago. And they go, why? I go, because if I get stopped, I know that you were going to take my phone off me. So you said that straight? Said, told them straight. They laughed. They know. Yeah. So whenever you go away, you take a different phone? I would do, yeah. I don't really go away often, but I just went to get a break. That's what it was. So Listen, you've got to cover your tracks. If you know the games they play, the slippery yeah, games yeah. they play, there's no point. Yeah, and we're wise, isn't it? We're growing up on the street, so we know what certain things... As well, so we know how to conduct ourselves as well. Do you think your past has a part to play? Nah. They don't care about that. They're it. not interested in that. They know we le- I left that life a long time ago. Changed my identity, changed my appearance, changed my whole values and morals fully. No, it's big, it's big, it's big. And I'm, I'm kind of lost for words in the sense as because... Listen, you know you stand strong for what you know. Yeah, 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 of course. It is, and you've read facts. You've 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 got a community behind you who support you. You're not on here talking shit. Yeah, yeah, of That's course. what I mean. It's all backed up by proof, and that's what I'm Definitely. saying. Send me as much evidence as you can so we can have it flying across the screen to show the viewers. Nah, we appreciate that as well. So that they can see. Because you know what it is? It's very well... We can have someone come on the show and talk as much also, as they want to talk, as much... But when they're looking at paper, documents, for some reason, people don't take people's word for nah, it anymore. of course they don't. They don't. Nobody That's why I've always seen in my videos, and the viewers have vouched for it, when stuff comes on the screen, you always see, because I can see when the video gets paused, yeah. everyone wants to read documents for yeah, some yeah. reason. But people don't understand how many fake documents can get made up. Of course, of course. Like, I've had people come on the show and show me fake documents the government have made. Okay. There's, there's a lot going on out there. They yeah, can fake yeah. everything. Everything. Yeah, man. And I've always said to people as well, if the police want to arrest you, yeah. they will arrest you. Yeah, they've got the power to do it. They're the think, biggest gang, man. Yeah, the number one gang in the world. Don't yeah. think that you're too smart or they've got no evidence. Of course. They'll arrest you for looking at them funny. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you've experienced... Listen, I'm shocked they raid your house and didn't nick no one. No, on them, that that raid, they didn't arrest no one. Everyone was in the house. Everyone. What'd they say? Just get out. Yeah, you said you can leave the house if you want. I just walked out. I ain't staying there. I just left. And my sister's there. My family were there. And they raided everything. They took the money, took the phones, everything. Never heard anything back? Never. They've still got my property six years later. Have you asked for it? Yeah, of course. And what are they saying? Nothing. The only reason I got my passport back is uh, there's an MP, Preet Gill, and she put it on them to get that back. Because I go, I don't know what stamps they're going to put on my passport. I don't trust them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, man. They're going to st- st- stitch us up. So don't you find it hard living your life like this now? Yeah, it's very difficult. Very difficult. Uh, any activist who's on it, your life's... There. Not just me, there's many... Sikhs around me what about who have had car? a lot of pressure. What about your car getting pulled over? Yeah, man, all the time. You get pulled over a lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, then they, they realise it, just, it's a disruption, isn't it? If you look under the government prevent scheme, they're just gonna, there to disrupt your life. Give you as much headache as possible. 100%. Shut until you up. give up. Until you shut up. Disruption, and that's what this government prevent scheme does. It just wants to disrupt your life, your finances, the people around you. Um, when we got raided, when when they've uh, arrested me, and t- they've gone for family members, they've gone put pressure on them. They're ringing my sisters and my brothers and their families, putting pressure on everyone. They've gone to places where we do speeches. Don't let him come on stage. Don't do. They've internally tried to disrupt our lives fully. They played a bit. They've played a lot of games. 
So what what are you going to do next? Just keep staying active? Look, as a Sikh, I've got my morals and values. Obviously, you live a family life. You try your best. To, but that's all I'm going to do is try my best. I, you can't give a... De- Look, I ain't done nothing to those who have sacrificed their lives for our community. In it, so we ain't done nothing. But we're trying it. While we're here, while we've got the strength... And the voice. Do, yeah, man. And I think the good thing is, with social media now as well, the platforms that are given... For example, my platform here. Yeah, man. Hopefully, it gets loads of views. It brings more light to it. And even for the non-Sikh members as well. Yeah, man. To look at what is going on around the world. Not just you, but all around the world. There's that situation. You've got Palestine. You've got so many other situations as well where the more voices we bring to show that the world, all these big global... Governments are yeah. corrupt. Yeah, man. It says a lot. It's, there's it so much shit. Even if you want to throw it way back to 9 yeah, 11. Yeah. Well, that, well, come on, man. That yeah, wasn't a terrorist course. thing. That was obviously Is an inside thing. 100%. And like, if we bring it back to Juggy a bit as well, like a few years into him being um, picked up over there, I think it was like two years ago, Reprieve, their uh, NGO, human rights NGO in the UK, they've released and they've found documents which prove that MI5 and MI6 are the ones who gave India the tip-off. They yes. said they've given the tip-off for his, because of his all of his um, groundwork here. They've the ones who've done it. So that that's public as well. Anyway, and that's public out That's public. Everyone knows MI5, MI6 were part of that. Well, look, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, it's just a lot it's, of pressure, it's, bro. It's, the thing is, you lot just got to keep making more noise. Yeah, man. More noise. Yeah. Let everyone know. Look, listen, Definitely. at the end of the day, you need to put the government in a position where they understand. The, the uh, world needs to know. Look, one, the genocide. That's 40 years ago, but we're still going to talk about it. Second, when you're picking up our boys who are from here, over there, and torturing them, no, nah, we're not having it. When you're murking guys on UK soil and you think we're going to stay quiet, no, nah, that's not happening. Yeah, it's madness. Yeah. It's mad. It's mad. Well, look, is there anything you want to tell to the Sikh community? Nah, just keep raising your voices for Juggy, for the Justice for Kanda campaign. And I want to appreciate Mikey for giving us the platform on the Blue Tick show. Really important. But just keep sh- speaking the truth about the issues that affect the community. Definitely. Well, look, at the end of the day, I appreciate you coming on the show. I'm glad that it's all backed by facts as well. Like I yeah. always say, I love it. My show is an open platform. Yeah, I don't care religion. I've had stories on here that people get pissed off at. <laughs> but that's what yeah. I say to everyone. My platform, it gives you a voice. Yeah, if man. it can help one person, Therefore. that's my job done. Nah, we appreciate it. That's what I always say. If I can help just one guest, one viewer, one anything out there, I'm happy with it. Yeah. And listen, pleasure having you on the show. Guys, if you do want to get involved, make sure you go follow him on his socials. They'll be in the